Hey Google, how many countries in Africa start with the letter K? While there are 54 countries in Africa, none of them begin with the letter K. The closest is Kenya, which starts with a K sound, but is actually spelled with a K sound. In the last few years, Google's reputation for being the best source to find information online has been on a massive decline, and users are starting to take notice. In fact, it's estimated that almost 50% of Gen Z is starting to use alternative methods for finding their information online, and a monopoly that span nearly two decades long might finally be crumbling. I'm going to show you why it's happening and how you can take advantage of one of the biggest transfers of power in history. If we're going to understand what is happening with Google today, though, we need to go back to what made Google so great so long ago. Most people don't really understand what the internet was like in 2004 or what it would be like today without any kind of search engines. Anyone could start a website or a blog. Anyone could start posting their expertise or knowledge or lack thereof. The problem was there was no real way for anyone to find these experts' content unless you knew the exact domain of their website. So there wasn't any kind of social media, there wasn't any kind of search engine like we currently use today. You can almost think of it like the real world centuries ago when, when humans were scattered all over in these little colonies, right? And there was no way for them to communicate between all these different groups. And even if one group managed to get a ton of knowledge, a ton of information, write it all down, it was never really shared. So when Google saw this, they created these digital crawlers, like these little digital spiders that would crawl across the internet and they would index and save every single site and article they found. Now what this did is it made a way for anyone to find these blogs, sites, or people that had so much experience in all these different subjects and fields and get access to that experience. It really sparked the golden age of the internet. But like with everything else out there, marketers ruin everything. Because we quickly realized that eyeballs equals money. And the more eyeballs that we could get on our website and our posts, the more money we would make. And so began the most epic battles of our century, the battle between marketers and Google. Now at first, everything was was easy. Marketers realized that Google's algorithm was taking the phrase that people were searching for and it was finding articles that said that word or that phrase the most and it was serving that up first. So they got smart and started stuffing hidden keywords into their content with white background. White background, white words. You could write the exact word or phrase people were typing in 500 times into your article and no one would see it except for Google spiders. Now what this meant is that content that wasn't necessarily the best content, in fact it was usually pretty poor for the user, was starting to show up and it was starting to rank in Google. So Google Google started to fight back and they made these algorithm updates that taught their database to recognize this and ignore it. But it didn't really stop the marketers who continued to find ways to get their content to show up in search engines, oftentimes over better content. So the fight continued. Google continued to make updates in attempts to show the best results to users. And almost three decades later, Google's core algorithm is now two billion lines long. Tens of thousands of different engineers have worked on different pieces of it. And thousands of engineers are currently working on who knows what. What? Is it even remotely possible that anyone knows how it all works at this point? The answer is no. And out of these billions of lines of who knows what code came three very problematic updates that are currently leading Google to its own destruction. Number one is length. Years and years ago, Google decided that it wanted to turn up the most comprehensive results on the web, and so they incorporated that into the algorithm. So the average search result that ranks in the first spot is typically thousands of words long and goes far and above and beyond the singular question that the user is asking. If I turned your average Google search into a conversation, it might look something like this. Hey Google, my back herniated disc is killing me. Is there some stretches or something you have that can help out? Sure, I'd love to help. Here's the first result. Herniated discs can be quite painful to the back and often very debilitating to the people that suffer from them. The term herniated disc comes from the Latin word herniatus discifolius, which actually means my back hurts badly. They were first discovered by Greek scholars who used to herniate their discs on purpose with hammers so that the pain would help them stay up through their studies. Yes, I'm, I'm really aware of that, but do you have any stretches that can help it to feel a little better? First, I'm going to explain what a disc is, and then I'm going to tell you how many discs you have in your back, and then I'm actually going to tell you seven different ways that our discs are similar to our ancient ancestors, the monkeys. Honestly, any other time, I would be super interested in that, but right now I just need a few stretches. Next, I'll show you a few ads, make you click the read more button, and after that, you'll be happy to know that I'm going to show you five stretches that will help your back. I know you know what I'm talking about. Now, problem number two is when Google develops something called domain authority. And this is where Google assigns websites a certain level of authority that they're given based on typically how many links they have and how many of those links come from other authoritative sites. Not a real number, but you can kind of think of that going on in the background. Now, I've worked for a lot of blogs or very large companies that have very high authority in Google's eyes. And let me show you how most of these big websites and blogs get their content. 
Hi, this is Spencer. I'm the marketing director at a very large and prestigious company. We're looking for someone to manage our blog writing content process. Hi, Spencer. Oh, we can definitely help. We have an entire team of copywriters that can write blog posts in the perfect way so Google loves them. Oh, great. I'm sure people will love those articles as well. Sure. Okay, you're hired. I want the first article to be about five back stretches that you can do for herniated discs. Perfect. We'll get started on your articles right away. I would be willing to bet that 95% of the large companies and blogs outsource their content to clueless writers who just search Google and then write down what they just learned. No one is speaking from their experience. No one is speaking different viewpoints or any kind of contrarian stances. It's like getting locked in a library with 10,000 books. And when you start to actually open them and read them, you realize they're all the exact same book and someone just swapped out the covers. And that's going to take us to number three. And this one's called EAT or experience expertise, authority, trustworthiness. Now the way EAT started was an attempt to let experts and people that really knew what they were talking about and had experience be at the front of the results. It sounded great. After all, that's who we want to hear from typically, right? So they really put this emphasis on this in searches that have big life impacts like health and money. The problem is that Google is now stuck trying to determine if someone is really an expert or not. But here's what Google's own head of search told people when asked how the algorithm was actually determining who was an expert. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Yes, they don't actually know how it's being determined. How does Google know if a person writing about a 401k or investing in real estate really knows what he's talking about? And the truth is, they don't. And this part of the algorithm often overrides the most important part of what Google is about, which is the page it's sending you to actually what you're looking for. Remember, Google, that's what you do. That's your entire purpose. Help me find what I'm looking for. But instead, when I go type in the best ATV trails in the Uintas, which is a mountain range right by my house, I first get an ad, then I'm taken to this blog post, which is the seven best ATV trails in Utah, which is my entire state, which takes six hours to drive across. Next, I'm taken to this forest service page, which gives me one specific trail, but no information on that trail, nothing at all I might actually use to determine if this trail is for me. Next is taking me to a forest service page with a big list of trails, but once again, if I click into any of them, it doesn't really give me any information that's helpful about those trails. And the third one is this other forest service site showing me a bunch of general rules for camping and OHV when I'm out in the mountains. Now this is the EAT algorithm, saying it doesn't matter if a bunch of other sites are actually the most helpful because this site is the authority on the subject, right? It has all the expertise. That one single paragraph that it's giving me is actually trusted to be true. So it doesn't matter that the site is run by bureaucratic nobodies in an office in Washington who don't really care one iota or not if I'm happy because they're the authority on the matter. So where do you go? Google is getting worse by the day. That's what happens when something becomes a monopoly, by the way. It goes downhill almost every single time, but I believe there's two places online that exist that still do what the original Google was supposed to do. The second one, it blew my mind. The first one is Reddit. So let's see what happens when I type in herniated disc back stretches into Reddit. You can see right here, someone asked that exact question. People with a herniated disc, what core exercises are you doing to keep your disc safe? You can see here, I instantly get the information that matters. No trash, a full list, stuff that doesn't actually show up in Google. When I search those top few searches, none of this stuff is showing up in those. And the person who actually wrote this is not a freckled faced, fresh college graduate with a degree in journalism who's never felt a twinge of back pain in their entire life. Now also, they're admittedly not a doctor. What they are is someone who's had the same thing as me and they've found something that actually works for them and now they're sharing it. And isn't that what we all want? Or at least some kind of mixture of the two? Maybe a few official sites and a few everyday people with experiences like ours who have found solutions? You can type in virtually anything and you will find that the Reddit results are vastly superior to Google in terms of actually helping people solve their problems and doing it quickly. How to get urine out of the carpet? Google results have an affiliate link to 12 random cleaners available on Amazon. Reddit, on the other hand, instant agreement from a bunch of real users on something that wasn't even on the list of 12, plus some good situationally specific advice to boot. So why did Google give me 12 different options that weren't very helpful? Length. And the writer actually had no clue, so they probably just searched Amazon and picked 12 cleaners, and if they were halfway decent, they probably looked at the reviews. You know, I just want to do one more, one more, because it's honestly hilarious, and this is just another nail 
email in the coffin. We'll type in how to make money online. Now I'll admit that when I initially did this script, the actual top two results were flipped. And so we're gonna be going with the second result, but the idea is still there. So you can see when I type in how to make money online, first we're gonna get a bunch of ads. One of those is for a survey company. And I would challenge you to find me one single human being on the planet who has earned more an hour doing surveys consistently than they would make it say Burger King. But the first real result, or at least what was the first real result last time I checked this is from MailChimp. Now MailChimp is a huge site with massive domain authority. They're also an email marketing site. So I don't really know what qualifies them to teach a bunch of different ways to make money online to people. But let's look through here first. We're going to get a bunch of different fluff. Can I make money online? Yes, apparently you can. Is making money online fast? We get to read a few more paragraphs about that. Now section three, we're finally getting to what I came here to see, which is how to actually make money online. At which point I quickly start to realize that these are just 10 generic ways, which by the way, are all 10 on the list from the number two side as well. I head to Reddit and guess what? There's no long drawn out garbage of useless fluff. There's just real people telling you real ways that they're solving real problems. And this is why Google is headed downhill. It's an echo chamber of writers with no real world experience teaching you what they just learned 30 seconds ago from another writer. I do not believe the next generation is going to stand for that kind of content. Now I mentioned the second one is going to be a surprise and it really is because it's TikTok. Yes, that little singing and dancing app from just a few years ago is turning into a search engine giant right before our eyes. Researching Google, for example, for places to visit churned up five generic sites. None of the top five articles were written by anyone who lived in Florida and maybe even visited Florida. And so the same 10 places came up every single time. I got Orlando with Disney World in it. I got Cape Canaveral. I live 1,500 miles away from Florida and I already know about these places. One quick search in TikTok and I can click on this video right here and you can see I'm looking at a video from Nicole for Adventures. Someone you can see right here lives in Florida. It's five places that most people don't know about. And as I actually sit here and watch the video, that's correct. I don't know any of these places. I get to watch a little video clip of each place to see if it's somewhere I actually want to visit. And you don't have to waste any time because you can see right here, the video is only 22 seconds long. Tell me that's not what you're looking for and exactly what you want when you type in places to visit in Florida. Google is fading away. And the younger generation, they're already catching on to it. And the older generation will soon as well. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can actually take part in this massive revolution and capitalize on what's really a good money making opportunity. So go ahead and click subscribe and you'll be notified when that video comes out.